Hey everybody, I'm starting a new build, so I thought I'd bring you along. Today, I'm going to make a battery cart, which are all over YouTube. We've got a furniture dolly with a battery and an inverter. I'm going to do mine a little different than you have probably have seen, so stick around and check it out. This is my Lily Poles 12 volt 300 amp hour battery. This thing is incredible. I'll talk more about it later. So I'm going to mount this on a little furniture cart. I want to see uh, how long it is so I can mark where my top piece is going to be. And it's about 20 inches. Two foot square piece of plywood from Home Depot is about $11. And the furniture cart was 80 bucks. They have a smaller one, but it's shorter. Uh, a smaller one that's less expensive, but it's shorter than I would have liked. Um, I have another one of these, and I, I like the height, and I, I like the durability. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to trim along the sides. Before I cut this thing, I'm going to go ahead and lay out my other pieces, my inverter and my charge controller, make sure they fit. So measure twice, cut once. And it's a good thing I checked, because these things are a lot wider than I thought that they were. So this is a Gandel 1200-watt inverter not sponsored. I have another one and I really like it. And this is a Rich Solar 40 amp charge controller. Also not sponsored. Uh, I have another one and I like it as well. So this is a big beefy uh, setup for both of them. The reason why I'm doing a separate inverter and charger as opposed to like an EG4 or an MP Solar, one of those all-in-ones, is because their minimum solar input voltage is too high. It's like 120 volts. That means you have to have at least four very big panels to even get them to kick on. The other problem with them is they have a very high parasitic draw just by very nature of having them plugged in. And also I can move these components around so, uh, and use them for other things. So I'm going separate with this as opposed to an all-one. Also, the EG4 MP Solar are typically 24 or 48 volts, and I only have one 12-volt battery for right now. So this is a 12-volt solution uh, top to bottom. And I'm going to have to cut this wire because these things are so big. And I could probably nick the top off, but I'm just going to leave it there because who knows what this will end up looking like. So I've got enough uh, room at the top to to grab it as a handle. So uh, let's just figure out what the layout is and screw them down. So now I need to bolt the plywood down to the rack itself. And that's just a matter of getting it centered and drilling a quarter inch hole in, the, in uh, each of the four corners. And I use a quarter by 22 inch bolts to uh, pin it down, easy. Getting the first one in is always the hardest, trying to stop it from sliding around. But I got one corner pinned down, so now I just need to do the other three. Make sure you charge your tools before you get started. My drill just died. Before you stand the thing up, brush away all your metal shards. That way they don't fall inside the uh, air intake. So it's pretty easy. Now I just need to uh, mount the battery and, uh, and uh, make all the wire connections. So uh, pretty straightforward. The uh, 300 amp battery that I've got weighs 70 or 80 pounds. So I'm gonna lay this down and drop the battery on top of it and then strap it down. And this is just as easy as a cargo strap. The inverter actually came with some pretty nice wires, which is uh, uncommon. They, they feel like they're a four gauge or better. Um, they're longer than I want them to be. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in so I can test the inverter and make sure everything's cool. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to cut them and, and trim them. And I think I'm going to put my shunt right here so I can keep a, an eye on the battery level. So there's the inverter from the top. You got USB, that's battery level voltage. Uh, USB A, quick charge and power delivery, which is awesome. And I know 
we've got output in wattage here. So if I plug something into it, it'll tell me how much I'm pulling. So uh, let's test that out. So I've got my little $20 space heater from Walmart plugged in that I use for load testing. We're pulling 840 watts. The fan has kicked on on the inverter, not surprising because it's pulling so much. And there we go, there's a 30 minute project. So here it is, here is the completed build. We've got a 1200 watt pure sine inverter going to a low poles 12 volt 300 amp hour battery. So we've got 3800 watt hours of power here. I've got a rich solar 40 amp MPPD charge controller over here that I'll just connect. And then I've got a power shunt up here to show draw. I've already tested this thing a couple of times and it does pull full capacity, but let's go ahead and do it again anyway. <clears throat> I've got my $20 space heater, which I know pulls 1500 watts if I crank it all the way up. So let's plug it in and let it rip. 800 watts. And that is on medium power. We're pulling 70 amps out of the battery for 900 watts total. So let's this thing, uh, let's let this bake for a couple hours. This is a four gauge that came with the inverter and I just trimmed it and put new terminals on it and then uh, connected it here to this shunt. Starting at 300 amp hours, it's 11 a.m. So uh, come back at uh, 3 o'clock. 140. 38 percent. Saying an hour and a half to go at 900 watts. And the wires are warm. I can still touch them. They're warm. Three o'clock. Still rocking and rolling. Ten percent to spare. We'll see you another thirty minutes. One of the things you might notice is that I don't have an AC charge capability on this. I do have a large forty amp AC charger that I'll just manually clip onto the terminals. Uh, I'm using it for other stuff, so I don't have it mounted into here. We've hit our zero. I'll give another minute. So I'll show you that. The wires are at 117 degrees. Now I'm also in my garage in Texas in June. Um, so it is a little interesting those wires are so hot, but you know, I don't smell burning or anything like that and I can still hold them, but uh, they're warm. Uh, but we've pulled the uh, 80 amps for three and a half hours. So, uh, you know, not uh, surprising, but I would, uh, I'll move up to a two, uh, uh, to a two gauge here shortly. So the Lily pulls 300 amp hour, has pulled 300 amps and more, and it's still going. So that's how you build a 3,800 watt hour uh, battery cart for not a lot of money. The final piece is for the solar connection. Uh, I really don't like MC4s. I think they're hard to work with. So I like using these uh, Anderson knockoffs. So I make a little jumper from the solar input to these uh, high current connectors. And then I've got this 50 foot long with an MC4 to that same Anderson connect. So I can put uh, my solar panels outside. So as you can see, this is a dead simple build. So to recap, we've got a 300 amp hour 12 volt battery, a 1200 watt inverter, and a 40 amp solar charge controller. 
there are two versions of the LilyPull 300 amp hour battery. One is $600 and one is $700. I have asked the manufacturer repeatedly what the difference is and they assure me the only difference is where the terminals are located. In one version, they're both on one end. In the other version, they're on opposite corners. So if you were going to parallel them or if you were going to series the batteries, it actually might make more sense to have the terminals on either end. So it's really a preference and whether or not you want to save 100 bucks. There's a bunch of coupons happening right now, uh, so the prices may vary a little bit. But six to seven is pretty impressive for a 300 amp hour that did pull capacity. The cart was $80 from Home Depot, and they had them at Harbor Freight for about the same. The inverter was about $150. The charge controller was about $160. The shunt's about $90. And then crimp terminals and things like that. So I have a 3,800 watt hour battery cart for 1,200 bucks. That is really incredible. Compare that against an EcoFlow or something like that, and it's just stunning. So I am really, really impressed with this battery. You know, I was skeptical since it's a, a, a new company, kind of a no brand name, but I have cycled this thing from dead to full four or five times, and it has not had a single glitch. I have a 40 amp charge, a DC charger that I use to charge it when I'm done, which takes all day, and it's not had any problems with that. Uh, they claim that the BMS is a 200 amp maximum output with a 200 maximum input, but not recommended. You know, you get into this kind of weird gray area of charging it too quickly. Um, that's what my solar is for. Um, so charging at 40 amps has been just fine. If I had a 100 amp charge controller, I feel pretty, or 100 amps worth of charging, I would feel pretty good about it. But this is a big, big, big battery backup to run my refrigerator, and then I'll supplement it with solar uh, during the day to juice it back up. Again, to recap why I didn't use an all-in-one like an EG4, I looked really, really hard for an all-in-one 12-volt inverter, charge controller, and AC charger, and I cannot find one in 12 volts. I can only find them in 24, like an MPP solar uh, or a Chins has a knockoff that does the same thing. So it would be nice to kind of have an all-in-one, but I have to have uh, two batteries. So if I buy a second one, I may move to that at some point, but I'm happy with where I'm at right now. You'll also notice I don't have an on-off switch on this. I just don't really care for them. Um, when I have these things stored, I will actually disconnect the battery completely. It's just one bolt with a crescent wrench and just shut the whole thing off. I don't have a master kill switch because it's just one more piece of wire I have to make and it's just one more thing to have to mount and I just kind of find them annoying. Um, and the shunt is completely optional. Um, since this is going to be my primary system, having the shunt was pretty nice so that way I can watch what, what the battery level is and kind of see what it's doing. But since the inverter has a current draw meter on it, if you had things cycling up and down, you could kind of keep your eye on what you're seeing there on the screen. So I hope this was uh, fun and helpful to you. And uh, check out the link below for all these components and drop a comment and let me know what you think of this build. Hey, thanks. We'll see you on the next one.